Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to you. It's fantastic to be here just before wine time, our soiree at 4.30. So we have a lot to get through in the next 30 minutes. If you have pen and paper, that would be great uh, so that uh, you can do some of the work along with me and get some of the, the rethinking done because what worked uh, in the last two, three years is not going to work in the next two, three years in order to generate revenue uh, for your business and in the industry. So uh, let's take, take a look. Three main areas that I would like to cover. Number one is let's evaluate the client relationships that you have right now and what is needed to build new relationships or to strengthen the ones that you have. I'd like also to walk you through some of the sales skills that are necessary for recovery. And then finally, it's about adjustments and taking action and what are the areas that you perhaps need to tweak in your business or in your approach to, to sales. But first, uh, when we're talking about leadership and change, the place where you need to start is with you. Because if you're not strong, how can you uh, generate change and how can you lead those and lead your clients uh, to be able to work with you? So as in, um, you know, if we're in an emergency situation on an airplane, we're all very familiar with that message to put on your own oxygen mask first. So what are you doing to ensure that you are strong, that you're taking care of yourself and that you're ready to lead yourself and your team and your business through this? And perhaps share what that one thing is. Uh, Richard, if you were to say what's your one thing that you must do every day that makes a difference to your day to keep you strong, what would you say that is? Is. Oh, for me, it's getting outside and, and exercising. So I know luckily in the UK, we've been allowed to go out once a day for a, a run. And that's definitely kept me sane um, yeah. through these times. Yeah, absolutely. So if people could share what's what's their one thing that would be that would be great. So what are the clients looking for right now? The clients are looking for and need relationships that are of value. And when I say value, I don't mean the monetary meaning of value. It's about what's important to them. How uh, can you help them? And are you helping them to generate ideas to really help them think through how they can do things different? Um, I hadn't realized the real importance of this until the last few weeks myself, when um, a lot of people were calling me, a lot of hotel owners, senior directors, agencies, and saying, Kira, you... Um, are speaking to a lot of people in the industry. You have a global reach. What are you hearing? And when people aren't sure what they um, should be doing, what they uh, could be doing, uh, what we need to ensure is that um, that uh, when you are connected with so many people, that you're able to uh, to share that knowledge, and that is of value to them. So a lot of salespeople, I feel, have really kind of. Um, you know, retreated and said, oh, it's not appropriate right now. It's not about the sales pitch. It's about connecting with people and building those levels of trust and confidence have always been important, uh, but are more and more important uh, uh, as, the, as the next few months and as the next uh, few years um, unfold. That's a picture of my dad and me. I just still remember him throwing me up in the air. And those levels of trust and confidence are absolutely critical and can be a very good uh, use of your time right now. So I want to share with you some insights from the buyer. I have been running space to rethink sessions since March 10th myself. And I have um, added to my community probably over 500 new people in the last two months. And I had a lot of buyers attend them also. And so these are questions that are in their mind. You know, what does coming together again to meet look like? Uh, we've, there's a number of different scenarios out there. A few of them have already been uh, discussed today in different sessions. But it's very important that you have an opinion, that you are thinking this through uh, in your business and able to lead conversations on that. They're checking with vendors to see who is currently there. Uh, if a hotel is closed, if an agency is responding then that's not giving them much confidence to be able to hold an event they need to be able to have confidence and to build confidence with their stakeholders also and of course the big question what 
are you doing to prepare for their recovery? They need to know that, uh, you know, once something is, is ready to go, that you are able to deliver that. And I think really it's about finding that fine line between um, making people comfortable in getting together and that, um, and that emotion of fear that there is so much of out there and, and being able to, to, to be confident in making people comfortable is a, a very important right now. Singapore Airlines were very early out with this in, in January um, and, and been super clear about their air filtration systems and uh, their uh, air filters and what they're doing on that. And recently, it's great to see the big hotel groups coming out with how they're shaping a world of trust and um, that, that stay safe policy. So let's look at the sales skills that are necessary for the recovery because uh, in, my, in my role, I have uh, trained a lot of hotels, uh, agencies and convention and visitor bureaus in the last uh, seven years on how to win, on how to, um, how to build trust and confidence with buyers. And what I have seen an awful lot of is a lot of sales skills that are really just about responding to leads and to RFPs and taking orders. Whereas now that needs to very much change to be um, very, uh, very focused on building relationships, building strong relationships and being able to lead the client. So it's not time for a conversation um, or sorry, it is time for a conversation right now. It's not time time for a sales pitch and that definitely would be an approach that would do damage if that was to happen right now but opening up conversations even with people that you haven't had a conversation with before it's a great time to do that um, a, a reason that I would have heard over the last uh, number of years for not calling the client would be that we didn't have time or that I can't get the client to call me back. Well, the client has more time now. And if you are approaching them in the right way, if you are being authentic, and if you're genuinely curious and want to open up that conversation, now is a good time, okay? Because conversations do create cash. And uh, while that may not happen tomorrow, now is the time to be building your sales pipeline for a quicker recovery in a few months time. Being proactive and focusing on proactive sales activity is the only way to have control. Uh, what we can control in this situation is our reaction to it. And this will help uh, ensure a quicker recovery which is what it's about. Okay, so top 10 crisis sales skills. Number one is listening. Uh, the buyer has said to me over the last number of years, Kira, I just don't feel listened to. Uh, that's you know one of one of their pet peeves for sure. That salespeople may tend to um, to you know obviously want to engage with the client but uh, aren't really listening to understand. Uh, a lot of people tend to listen to respond. And I know I used to do that myself and it takes practice to really cultivate your listening skills so the client really genuinely feels understood and that they're um, seeing and feeling a connection on a personal level, okay? And uh, that, um, that relationship that is of value. It's about really personalizing all touch points and not blast emailing people. It's really being a lot more uh, specific with marketing uh, so that the client feels that you are um, speaking to them and that you understand what's happening in their world. And really about cultivating uh, your position, your reputation, your brand in the industry as being that trusted advisor and that educator and uh, collaborating. I think there's a really wonderful opportunity right now to collaborate and to, um, you know, to see, to see how different companies that previous to this would have said, no, we're, we, we wouldn't work together. Uh, now there's opportunities for that and reaching out. Who else works with your uh, clients or with a client that, or somebody who's a potential client? Um, 
perhaps uh, opening up those kind of conversations. It's very much focused on how you can achieve results together. That's going to be a key message, a key approach in any sales strategy. And of course, the client um, wants you to help uh, them avoid some potential pitfalls, uh, you know, things that might go wrong from your experience. How can you help them in that? And the purchasing process more than likely has changed. Uh, it's, it's definitely got a little harder. And uh, so it's understanding that and aligning to that. It's a very important sales skill in order to get things over the line. And number 10, uh, showing your value. I've said this before, and I'll probably say it again before our time is out, really being able to position yourself as that partner as opposed to being the supplier. Because when you're seen as um, a supplier, more than likely your business, your service, your product has been commoditized and you may find that the conversation is all about rates. So it's trying to help you to get away from that. And the client really should be able to say, I cannot run as great an event uh, without uh, X person or without, uh, with, without their team, but genuinely being authentic. And, you know, coming from that, um, that intention of really wanting to help and, uh, and, and to serve people. And that can take a little bit of practice sometimes to come across in your sales approach. But it is possible, um, as Marie Elizabeth here with um, a Swiss Hotel uh, discovered, by changing your approach, by tweaking, perhaps asking questions in a slightly different way, it can really help you to, uh, to, to position yourself as that all important partner. So, you know, is this an area that you need to tweak for, uh, for your uh, approach in sales, for your sales team? Uh, do they need to tweak certain elements there in order to be ready for the recovery? And uh, there's, um, there, there are, you know, plenty of uh, uh, facilities out there. There's plenty of um, resources out there in order to help you to do that. And this is one that, um, that, that I have created myself and in terms of a training course. Are you an order taker? Is your team an order taker? Whereas we really need to be creating that order uh, maker uh, mentality and, um, and really being able to partner with the client uh, on this because the sales, the, 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 the sales ethos, the whole sales approach is going to be a lot different. The landscape is going to be a lot different in the next, uh, in the next few months and uh, in the next two years. So number three, let's take a look at adjustments and uh, where are perhaps the tweaks that, um, that, could be, uh, th th that you could be focused on. And really it's about getting ready. You know, that fear, that panic over the last two months, we need to be able to set that aside and really be proactive and get ready uh, for the opportunities that are there right now because there are opportunities there right now and business is happening right now. So if I may suggest uh, a few areas that you can be working on to ensure that, uh, that you and your team and your business is ready for recovery. So number one, um, it's about standing out and sounding different. And is your message different to your competitors? Or are you seen as a commodity by the client? And a, a way to evaluate this um, is if you noticed over the last few years that, um, that you or your team were hearing that you lost business because of rate. Um, that would be a key indicator that the right relationship wasn't there and that the client was really viewing you as a supplier. So it's about changing uh, that strategy strategy and what you have out there in terms of your sales tools, uh, which is the next step, um, uh, is very important. So the client is looking at your tools, your website, your descriptions, and Richard, right now, um, the IMEX profile, uh, that there, there's still a facility there that is live right now, I think, or there's more happening on, on Thursday in terms of your exhibitor directory. How have you carved that out to really make um, the client your ideal client uh, be able to, 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 to find you and, um, and really read it and just go, yeah, you know, that's it. They understand me. They get my world and really want to uh, open up that conversation with you. 
And the third step is writing proposals that win. It's absolutely critical. There is a lot, I've reviewed thousands of proposals and there's a lot of proposals out there that are really just a quotation. And uh, I feel that that is not going to be effective uh, in, the next, uh, in the next number of months and in the next mm-hmm. two to three years. So it's really, um, you know, being able to, to write a proposal that you can personalize, that it doesn't take all day and, um, and that the client can read and go, wow, you know what? They listened to me. They get me. They understand me. And they want to respond to that proposal. And of course, number four, building a healthy sales funnel. Um, You know, are you attracting the right kind of leads? And I feel quite passionate about this because when we're going into that next stage of business, um, it very much is is about attracting business that's the right fit for your business and also attracting business that's profitable. Uh, You know, when we're in a stage of of having no revenue generated in the last uh, few months, we need to be focused on profitability and business that is going to help you to recover quicker. Uh, the wow show around the site tour word of mouth marketing repeat clients and referrals they're all wonderful if you have a system in place for them but these are the key four areas to take a look at and i'm going to invite you now in a minute to um to to evaluate them for your own business okay so what i'd like you to do is take take a pen in hand and this can be quite therapeutic to just write i'm not asking you to do any overthinking at the moment um, just write from the last 10, 15 minutes of your life, um, you know, listening to me, what has resonated with you? What are the areas that you feel that you personally or your team can, can work on? And just write them all down. We'll put them into some kind of order in a minute. And then this could also be quite therapeutic, writing down what you don't have to spend time doing because we're not in operations mode. And uh, a reason why a lot of uh, the areas that I recommend haven't got done over the last number of years because people said, oh, I'm too busy. I'm, I'm too busy operating and servicing the client. Well, we're not doing that right now. So it's a key golden opportunity to really step back and look at your business from the client's point of view and work on those areas, okay? So I'll pause for a few minutes and give you some time to reflect on that. Okay, so if anybody wants to share what is coming up for them in terms of areas areas of adjustment, that'd be great, uh, t- type them up there. And, uh, and then uh, what I'm gonna ask you to do is to pick one of those areas and go into it in more depth, okay? So we'll probably move into that uh, right now, but feel free to, um, to share one of those areas, at least of adjustment. So let's take one of those, okay? What you think perhaps is the priority one, and I'm gonna go a little bit deeper with you on that right now. So what I want you to answer this is, why is this important to me? Now I'm asking this question because When we're motivated, uh, as you might be right now, to do something, um, tomorrow you might feel different about it. And uh, that motivation and inspiration, it can, it, it just naturally wears off. So, but if you tie it to something that's really, really important to you, that it's going to help you to achieve that, that's what helps to keep, um, to, 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 to keep you focused on, on doing something new. What's the situation today? Just jot that down. Where are you in that area right now? When this is done, what will this look like? Okay, you need to have a vision of what it'll look like and how it will be helping you, how it will help make your life better. What's required to move forward? Okay, what's required to move forward? What do you need to do to prepare uh, to get this project started? What support do I need and from whom? right? Maybe you need to set up the team. Maybe you need to delegate. What support do I need and from whom? Maybe you need support at home that you need two hours of non-interrupted time in order to get your head around this. What's likely to derail me and how will I respond? We all know there's so many more distractions right now. Whether if you're in work, there was lots of distractions. Been at home and working, there's even more. And uh, I think if you prepare now when you notice that you're being distracted, you're getting pulled away, that you have a plan of how you will respond. What's going to help you get back on track? How will progress or success be measured? 
and what's my next or my first step? What's my next or my first step? And I like to put a date on this, okay? Um, statistics show that more than 90% of the people who are on this workshop right now, if you don't do anything in the next week, you're not gonna do it at all, okay? So I want to help you to get something done. Ideally, if you get something started this week, tomorrow, um, at, after, after this session, whatever that might, might be, try and put a timeline on this to help you get it done, okay? So Mar Marlos is working on uh, his added value and uh, personal brand, your personal brand, absolutely, you know? So all of these apply, even if you're furloughed, if you're temporarily laid off, you know, look and examine what is your brand? How are you out there? What is my, um, my, my, my social media coverage? What comes back when I search for myself? Um, and you've time to, to, to carve that out, okay? What would your clients say about you? Okay. Who has come up with a good one about what's likely to derail me and how will I respond? Have you any suggestions around that one, uh, around that one um, Richard? Folks, I've created a lead for you. Uh, Richard will post it there. Um, a guide for leading your sales team through COVID-19. And uh, there, you can just download that um, from, from, from this website, okay? So uh, we have some time for Q&A now, but what I'd really love to, to know, folks, is what's just the one thing? If there was one thing that you were to take from the last 26 minutes of your life, uh, what would that be? And if you could share that in the chat box, that would be, uh, that would be really fantastic. Okay, so Diana is saying she's reconnecting with others. Oh, it's just disappeared. Uh, reconnecting with others and... Um, Ooh, I lost you, Diane. Sorry. There's been so much things since. Margarita is talking about being human. Absolutely. I think we kind of lost that a little bit over the, over the last few years. Um, Mitchell's the freedom to think big and creatively and, you know, do little tricks to help get you into that creative mindset. Listening to music is a great one. Sam McNeil was just um, sharing that with us. Do something that makes you happy every day to help prime your brain for um, creativity and drawing. Stuff like drawing really helps to do that also. Ashley is going to listen to the client uh, to help get ready. Yeah, um, work on, on those listening skills for sure. Um, so Manya wanted to send the website again. I'll, I'll just go back to that. Isabella was talking about being creative. Is it this website that you're, that you're talking about? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a, a handout that's available that will be uploaded to my profile and you'll be able to, to, to get it from, to get it from there also. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change, but the leader adjust the sales. So well done folks on, um, on adjusting the sales. Uh, if there's any other questions now, I still have another literally one minute and um, I'd be happy to, to do that. Um, there was a question a while back that I saw, um, somebody was talking about there's so much stuff going on right now. How do you, um, how, how can I get time to, to make all of these adjustments? My, my advice would be to take one. Uh, if you think, God, I have 10 things to do, how am I going to, to do that? You're going to overwhelm yourself and then that leads to inaction. So focus on one, take one, any one from today's session. Give yourself a week to, to, to get that right or a few days, a few hours, whatever that might be, and then move on to the next one. And I have found that if it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done, you know? So I am even right now scheduling my personal life. Um, I'm putting that into my calendar because it, it's, all, it's all so overlapped right now. So I have to uh, calendar my personal time, you know, uh, my homeschooling time, and then my business time and divide uh, it into different projects uh, on that as, 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 as well, okay? Quiva, good to see another Irish woman on the, on the webinar. Quiva is going to look at need to stand out. How has our messaging really been different to the rest? For sure, you know, there's a lot of agencies out there 
that um, you know that, that that are blending, and we want to make sure that you're positioned yourself as that partner and not as the supplier. So Lazar is about um, being authentic, building relationships, creative selling, and that personal that personal touch. Uh, Daniela said she liked the comment about showing our value, about showing ourselves as partners and not as suppliers, for sure. So Denise, Anastasia, you're all welcome. Anouk, good to see you again. Great session. Um, share which link is it that you want? People are saying to share which link. Let me know. Um, let me know which 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 link that is, and I'll be happy. Um, and I'll be happy to do that. Okay. I'll just go down. So Marlos shared it for me. Thank you, Marlos. <laughs> Becky, thank you. Great session. Yes, you're welcome. It's wine soiree time now. So folks, we'll see you in the networking rooms. Take care. Bye-bye.